Kinders, Mrs. Croft here today. We're going to continue our discussion about plants. In our last lesson, we learned that plants are living things. Can you remember what plants and all living things need to have to live? If you said food, water, air, and light, you were correct. Now, living things also reproduce or they create more of themselves. I'm going to read you a list of some things that are living and some things that are not. If you, if what I name is alive, you should stand up and say, it's living. If what I name is not alive, you should sit down and say, it's not living. Number one, desk. You should be sitting down. It's not living. Two, tree. You should be standing up. A tree is definitely living. Number three, a pencil. A pencil is not living. You should be seated. A rose bush, number five. Yes, a rose bush is living. You should be standing. Number six, a mouse. A mouse is living. You should be standing up. Number seven. Paper. Paper is not living, so you should be sitting down. All right, some plants come in different shapes and sizes and have different names and live or grow in different places. So, the same way people have all kinds of similar features, like we have faces and hands and eyes, plants have similar parts. And we're going to talk about those parts today. So let's listen to our read aloud. And first, we're going to learn some vocabulary words that go with our read aloud. Our first vocabulary word is leaves. That's the part of the plant that makes food for the plant. Roots, that's the part of the plant that keeps it in the ground and takes the food up and the water. Seeds, that's the small protected parts of the plant that we are able to grow in a new plant and we drop those in the ground to grow them. Stems. Stems are the part of the plant that support the plant and carry the water and nutrients to the rest of the plant. Survival. That means that's the act of staying alive. Some plants need food for to its survival. Let's go ahead and start our read aloud now. What do you see in this picture? Even though there are many, many different kinds of plants living in our world, all plants need nutrients, or another word is food. They also need water, air, and light. Look at these parts of the flower. We have seeds. We have roots. We have a long stem and some leaves, and then we have a flower part. Take a look at this sunflower. The parts of the plant you see down here at the bottom of the roots, the roots of the plant are covered with soil usually, and we don't see them. But they are there, and we usually aren't able to see where they are, but they help the plant grow and stay into the ground. The plant's roots reach way down into the soil and grow underground. They help hold the plant in place in the soil. But most important, the roots take the water that's in the soil and bring it up to the stem. And then it grows out up through the plant. It goes up to help feed the plant and they grow towards the light. As the water and nutrients travel up this stem, up here, they're able to reach other parts of the plants like the leaves. The leaves are the parts of the plant that attach and grow out of the sides of the plant. And they usually grow from the stem. The leaves are usually green, but they can be other colors sometimes. Many plants have flowers, like this one, which are also called blossoms. Look at the blossoms on this sunflower plant. All around the outside, it has many bright yellow petals. The flower petals are different of different plants come in different colors. Now look at the center part of this sunflower. 
That's where the seeds are. There's many petals around it, but that's where the many, many small seeds are made. One sunflower seed is only about the size of one of your fingernails. If the seeds of the sunflower plant are put into the soil, they will make a new sunflower plant. Sometimes people eat the seeds from some plants. You may have even tasted sunflower seeds yourself. Even though most plants have the same basic parts, they have roots, a stem, leaves and flowers and seeds, these parts might look a little different on different kinds of plants. These are beautiful flowers and are from many different kinds of plants. Did you notice that not only are the colors of the flowers different, but the flower petals from each plant are different as well and have different shapes. What do you see in this picture? Yeah, there's a tree and there's some grass and there's some bushes and more trees in the background. Well, this is an apple tree and it has the same parts as other plants. We can't see any of the apples because the picture was taken in the spring when the blossoms or the flowers have come out. The apples will start growing in this summer and will be ready for picking in the fall. We can't see the roots of the apple tree either because they're growing underground but we can see several other parts. We can see many of the stems on the tree out here. There's the stem, or we call it the trunk. And then the branches, also those dark branches. That is also part of the tree. Do you see the apple blossoms and the leaves? There are many, many leaves attached to the branches of these trees. The largest part of the tree is called the trunk. That's the outside of the tree. The outside of the tree trunk is covered with bark. Bark is of like clothing for trees. It's like their clothes. It protects the inside of the tree. What do you think this bark might feel like? Yes, it would be rough and bumpy. Here are some leaves from different kinds of plants and trees. Take a close look and you'll notice that the leaves have different shapes. In fact, one way to tell what kind of tree you are looking at is to look at the leaves. These are leaves like the leaf on the top. Right here is a sugar maple tree. This leaf over here, this one is from a white oak tree. The, white tr the leaf over here is from, oh, let's see, which one is that one from? An oak tree. This one is another type of a black oak tree. Leaves are especially important, though, for the survival of plants. In fact, the black oak, remember, many plants, not just trees, have leaves. So the black oak and all these other trees have to have leaves in order to survive. Leaves are also needing light. When light shines on a green leaf of any plant, the leaves absorb or they soak up the energy from the sun. So leaves get energy from the sun, just like you get energy from your food. Through an amazing process, it's called photosynthesis. So let's say it together. Photosynthesis, photosynthesis. That's how plants get energy from the sun. That is correct. That's how they do it. The leaf uses the light and, the wa and then t the water, and then they turn an air to turn the plant into food, plant for food, and the rest of the plant uses the, these things just so that they can eat and survive. Do you remember we said that the roots and the stem of the plant move water and nutrients up from the soil to other parts of the plant, like leaves? Well, during photosynthesis, I like that word, photosynthesis, water, 
nutrients, air, and light all come together in the plant's leaves. This is how the plant makes food for itself. It can't get up and walk around and go to the refrigerator like you and I. And it's a good thing because they cannot move like animals or people. So they're not able to go find their food somewhere else. They have to make their own food. Uh, once the water and the nutrients are made into food through photosynthesis and the parts of the leaves called the veins carry the food back to the stem. This is a picture of the veins in the leaf. So it absorbs the energy, brings it back to the stem right here, and then takes it to the bigger stem. Now you have learned about most of the basic parts of many plants. Plants begin as seeds, which sprout and grow to roots and stems and leaves and then flowers. The roots, stems, and leaves work together with water. They work with nutrients, air, and light to make food for the plant through photosynthesis. Say that word three times to help you remember it. Photosynthesis, photosynthesis, photosynthesis. That's how plants get energy from the sun. Let's check your comprehension and see what you remember. What would happen if a plant didn't have roots? Yeah, the plant wouldn't be able to eat and it probably wouldn't stand in the ground very good. It would fall over. Number two, what would happen if a plant didn't have a stem? You're right, it would probably fall over and it wouldn't be able to move the water and the nutrients up to the rest of the plant. Number three, what would happen if a plant didn't have leaves? Oh my goodness, if it didn't have leaves, it would not be able to make food for itself and it would probably die. What is it that the leaves do? It makes food for the plant in a process called, remember the word, photosynthesis. Now let's do some word work. In our read aloud, you heard, in fact, leaves are especially important to the survival of all plants. Say the word survival with me. Survival. Survival is the act of staying alive. Food, water, air, and light are important to a plant's survival. What is important to a living plant? Things survival? Try to use the word survival when you tell about it. Ask, is it possible that an ant or a plant can survive without food and water or light? Not necessarily. What is the word we've been talking about? Survival, that is correct. Well, let's go ahead and end our story for today. And I will be back with another story and we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening.